Now we are going to take up the topic that is the electrochemical cell, right? As you already know that electrochemistry is a branch which just deals with the conversion of electric energy into chemical energy and the simultaneously we can have the chemical energy into electric energy, right? So the, we need a device in which this kind of electrochemical change can be carried out and that is the electrochemical cell, right? So that means electrochemical cell is actually a device in which electrochemical change can occur, right? So depending upon the how the, the arrangement is there electrochemical cells are basically of two types right one is an electrolytic cell and the other is the galvanic cell right so first of all you should know that uh, these cells uh, in these cells which kind of conversion occur right so in electro electrolytic cell electric energy is converted into the chemical energy by looking at it it should be clear that we'll be applying an external source of current and uh, for this uh, due to that elect uh, external uh, uh, this thing the source the chemical reaction will take place right and what happens in case of the galvanic cell it is just vice versa of it that means the chemical reaction will take place and it leads to the production of electric energy. That means here if we don't need uh, an external source of current, uh, automatically the chemical reaction will occur and they will just produ produce the current, right? So just see how it produced. So again, I am just repeating, it is a device in which the electrochemical change can be carried out. Electrolytic cell, uh, it is a type of electrochemical cell in which electric energy gets converted into the chemical energy. And galvanic cell is the cell in which the chemical energy gets converted into the electric energy, right? So just first look at that, what is the electrochemical, uh, electrolytic cell and how it works. Electrolytic cell consists of a beaker, right? So this is a beaker or you can say it is an electrolytic cell. Right. So, what does it contain? It contains a solution that is it contains an electrolyte. Electrolyte is actually a substance which will lies on passing the electric current that is the name suggests it is electrolyte. That means electricity is passed and it gets lysed. So, that is why it is called as an electrolyte. Right. So, what do we have in it? We have the electrodes that is the source of the current. Uh, you can say the, the, these electrodes will actually pass the current into the solution. These are called as electrodes. They are mostly form of graphite that is the form of carbon mostly. And they are connected by means of wire to the battery. When I indicate two lines it specifies the battery right. The bigger line corresponds to the positive terminal and the smaller lines corresponds to the negative terminal right. So the electrode which is attached to the positive terminal of the battery is positively charged that means it acts as a node. It is the name of the electrode right. We have electrode 2 again I will write for you the positive and the negative one depending to which uh, terminal of the battery they are attached to. If they are attached to the positive terminal it acts as anode, if it is attached to the negative terminal it acts as cathode. Right. So similarly it acts as cathode that is the negatively charged terminal. So this kind of operators we have in electrolytic cell. Again I will repeat this is the cell, this is the electrolyte, the solution which is which will be lysed on passing in the current. Electrodes connected by means of wire to a battery, positive terminal that is positively charged anode, negative terminal negatively charged that is cathode. Right. So suppose just to make you understand I am considering an electrolyte to be AB. Just to ex we'll be doing in detail with uh, the specific examples, but just to make you clear that how this electrolytic cell actually works, because you must be curious to know that how the, this apparatus is going to work. So that is why I'm considering an example that is AB, right? So it is a good electrolyte. So what happens when the current is switched on? I'll put a key also. So when we we'll switch on this current, that means circuit gets completed and the current flows through the electrode into the electrolyte, and this electrolyte gets dissociated like this right that means this form positively charged ion and this form negatively charged ion now what will the what will be the fate of these ions this positively charged ion will move to the electrode of the negatively charged electrode that is the me you know that the opposite charge attract each other right so that means the oppositely charged ion will obviously go to the electrode which will carry the opposite charge that means it will go to a negatively charged electrode that is the cathode 
and this negatively charged ion will go to the positively charged electrode that is the opposite one that is the anode right so they will move so you can say we have a b here right a positive b negative it this positive will move to this side and b will move to this side so this reaction or you can say the process doesn't end here uh, on moving to cathode and node they perform certain reaction they get a, a change in themselves so just see what kind of change happens when they move so what happens at cathode so what kind of reaction occur at cathode when this uh, a positive as you can see move to cathode that means this is positively charged ion that means it has lost its electron and how many electrons it is equal to the number of charge it possess so as you can see there is only one positive charge that means it has lost one electron so here it will just gain its electron back which it has lost earlier so that means because it has lost one electron so it will gain one electron and will turn from atom to sorry ion to atom so this is actually a gain of electron that is the reduction so reduction occur at cathode right so what happens in uh, the thing anode now so what kind of reaction happens at anode what migrate to anode obviously you can see b negative migrate to anode so that means this b negative why it is b negative because it has gained electron how many it is equal to the number of charge so as you can see it has only one charge so that means it has gained one electron so what it will do at anode it will just uh, you can say give back the electron which is it has already accepted that means one electron and it leads to the formation of b so that means the oxidation loss of electron that is the oxidation occurs at anode right so this is the uh, kind of you can say the uh, the reactions that occur in the electrolytic cell as you can see the uh, we pass electric energy and this kind this leads to the conversion of this chemical energy so that means it is a cell which deals with the conversion of electric energy into the chemical energy i think it's clear now right so this is how the electrolytic cell actually work now let us concentrate on this galvanic cell as i told you it is a cell which works uh, in opposite manner to the electrolytic cell that means it convert the chemical energy into the electric energy it was converting electrical into chemical it will be converting chemical into electrical that means we don't have to use any battery or cell in this case because it will produce the current at the cost of chemical reactions occurring in it so just see that how the, what is the apparatus used in the galvanic cell it consists of two beakers right it conti contains the electrolyte and even it contains the electrolyte suppose i am taking an example of zinc copper uh, galvanic cell so this is zinc rod and the electrolyte we are using is one molar znso4 solution right so similarly here we are taking copper rod dipped in one molar copper sulfate solution so this is how but they are not uh, present separately they are connected with each other by means of a metallic wire right as we know that it is going to produce the electric energy that means we need an instrument which can just show that the electric energy is produced so that is why we have put galvanometer here right do you know what is galvanometer you must be thinking that ammeter is a device which is used to measure the electric current but in this case i am using the galvanometer so what is the difference between the galvanometer and the ammeter ammeter is an instrument used to measure a high amount of current and galvanometer is a instrument which can even measure a very small magnitude of current as well also so that means in order to just find this minute amount of current which is generated as a cost of chemical if, uh, energy or a chemical reaction we need a galvanometer because it is sensitive very sensitive and it can even uh, show the deflection on the production of the small amount of current right so that is why i'm using the galvanometer here and i've just used the key also right so this is the apparatus it is not all, all done we have a you can say a different you'll get to see a different thing in it these two solutions are also connected with each other by means of this uh, tube u shaped tube and this is called as salt bridge 
it is actually connecting the solutions and the solutions that means uh, it is just completing the circuit as you can see the external circuit is connected by means of wire it is also connecting the uh, this thing the solution and it, it do serve as a important uh, use that it makes the solution electrically neutral and just keeps the cell uh, performing its function but how we will be taking up later so for this moment because we just need to differentiate between them that what kind of structures they possess we will be discussing the functions later but for this moment just uh, go through this figure right so again I am repeating there is two cells one cell containing zinc rod and ZNSO4 one molar solution other copper rod and CUSO4 solution solutions connected by means of u-shaped tube that is the salt bridge which can carries the inert electrolyte function we will be discussing later right so first we thorough with this figure and this is the wire and this is the galvanometer right and it is the key so this is the you can say a apparatus which is used in a galvanic cell right now as we saw that what kind of reactions occur in this we'll be seeing just uh, we'll have a look here also not in detail because we'll be doing detail after completing these kind of cells but uh, for this moment i want to tell you that you must be curious to know that what kind of reaction occur like if the reaction occur in this is this and what kind of reaction occur in this right so what happens out of this zinc and copper, uh, the one which has the more power to get oxidized is will get oxidized. That we decide on the basis of the value of the electrode potential. Now you must be thinking what is electrode potential? That is what I want to tell you. We will be discussing in the later topic. So for this, this movement, just I am using this word like out of two rods, the which rod will have the maximum tendency to get oxidized will lose the electron. And the one which has less, uh, ox you can say, the ability to get oxidized will get reduced in this case right so the one out of them which is you can say a powerful reducing agent or which has more tendency to get oxidized will get lose the electron and the one will uh, and the will be the first one to initiate the chemical reaction so out of zinc and copper it is the zinc so that means zinc will lose electron and it will turn into zn2 positive what will happen now this uh, you know that uh, this thing what is occurring oxidation is occurring right these two electrons will flow from these it is not only the two electrons because it is uh, the two electrons are liberated from one zinc atom right we have so many zinc atoms which are getting uh, oxidized so that means that it leads to the generation of numerous electrons so these electrons are traveling from this wire to this and uh, when they travel they just give the indicate the deflection in the galvanometer that means the flow of electron that is constitute an electric current right so what hap what is happening this key is joint the, when this uh, charge is just moving this is reaching the copper right and as I told you that out of zinc and copper copper has a tendency to get reduced so it is just gaining two electrons and again forming the copper atom right so this is how this kind of reaction is occurring so that means what is occurring here reduction is occurring so this uh, you can see that uh, this galvanic cell just performed this kind of reaction or I can sum it in this way also Zn, Zn Cu2 positive give rise to Zn2 positive plus Cu. So the, the one half cell in which oxidation is occurring is called as oxidation half cell. And the one in which reduction is occurring is called as reduction half cell. As you can see that in this, the, in a similar beaker oxidation reduction were occurring, right? But in them, the, there is a separate beaker for the oxidation and the separate beaker for the reduction, right? So this is the, actually the difference between them that how they work. And uh, I think you are clear with the cell now that is the uh, electrolytic and the galvanic cell, right? Now. Uh, what is the basic difference between these two cells right the first difference is that it actually convert electric energy into chemical energy and it convert the chemical energy into electric energy it is clear to you right it <coughs> it consists of one beaker and it consists of two cells or you can say it consists of one cell and it consists of two cells right now when this kind of reaction occur heat is produced but in this case no heat is produced right and moreover in this case you get to see that uh, there is uh, uh, no production of electricity or you can say there is no electric current produced but at the result, as the, uh, these reactions occur they lead to the production of electric energy right and these reactions go almost to completion but these reactions do not undergo completion they go on working because one is getting oxidized at the same time other is getting reduced so these reactions do not go to uh, you can say the complete completion they just go on uh, occurring occurring and occurring but uh, doesn't get uh, the reaction won't stop here right so these are actually the electric uh, electrolytic cell and the galvanic cell 